Hello and welcome. So my name is Marisol Rakowski and I am the String Department Supervisor for Octopus Music School. I will be hosting this live stream for all the parents in our area to help with learning the basics of string instrument tuning. We are going to begin in just a few short minutes so if you can just bear with me for three extra minutes to have some extra people come in and watch the stream, we'll be ready to go. Okay, so as stated before, my name is Marisol Rakowski. Um, I am the String Department Supervisor for Octopus Music School, and this is our live string clinic for tuning um, instruments. So what we want to know is that um, during this time, string instruments are being practiced out of tune, and while that's okay for emergencies, we don't want to promote poor ear training or intonation technique while they're at home. So to help all you parents out and older students, I will be just demonstrating on my own violin instrument how to tune with fine tuners and pegs. The techniques I will be sharing are similar across the board for viola and cello with just different string tunings. While I'm demonstrating or explaining these techniques, feel free to ask questions in the comment section so that I may be able to answer them as quickly as possible. If you all are ready to go, I'm ready to start, so let us begin. So the first thing we need to talk about is tuning. Tuning is the process of adjusting the pitch of one or many tones on a musical instrument until they form the desired arrangement. Pitch is perceived as a fundamental frequency of sound. Instruments basically just produce vibrations and from these vibrations produce the sound that we want to hear. The vibrations or sound waves that an instrument produces are measured by hertz. One hertz simply means one cycle per second. A hundred hertz means 100 cycles per second and so on. The average human can hear the sound between 20 hertz and 16,000. When we tune our instruments, traditionally the pitch A, which will be located above middle C, is defined as 440 hertz. When an instrument is out of tune, it means that the pitch or tone of the instrument is either too high or too low. If a tone is too high, it is considered sharp. If it is too low, then it's considered flat. So you might be asking yourself, well, how does my instrument get out of tune? Well, there are many factors of why an instrument may go out of tune. Some instruments get out of tune with damage or age, such as warping from the wood, when they can no longer play true and have to be repaired. Also, changes in temperature or humidity can affect some sensitive instruments. As temperatures fluctuate, instruments may expand or contract. This causes the instrument to go slightly out of tune and on string instruments, brand new strings can go out of tune quite quickly and need to be broken in at first. This is why when you notice that you repair a string that has been broken on your instrument, that as soon as you start playing for more than 10 minutes, it already needs to be readjusted. Also, a string can be put out of tune if you're not careful with it. If you bang the pegs located here, or the fine tuners on your instrument, it will go out of tune. So you need to always be cautious and careful with your instrument when placing it down or putting it back inside the case. Tuning may be carried out by sounding two pitchers and adjusting one of them to match or to relate to the other. Several different devices may be used to produce the different pitch, such as tuning forks, pianos, and or electronic tuning devices, such as phone apps or online tuners. Over here, hopefully you can see it well, I do have one of my electronic tuners going on. It is called Pitch Tune, and it is a tuner 
that will calibrate to the hertz or the frequency that I'm making and try to find where it's located. I'll be demonstrating how to use this more when we're tuning with the fine tuners later, later on in our clinic. So basically when you're tuning, you're trying to match the frequency or the vibration of one note to another. If the two pitches you play at different frequencies, it'll produce a beating sound, almost like a wah-wah, which is called interference beats. So I'm going to demonstrate what I mean by interference beats, when two notes are not matched together. So in this case, I'm going to try and tune my A string to my piano, which I have located next to me. So we're going to just detune my A so that you can hear the modal difference. So if I were to play my A now with the A on the piano, you can hear that it's clashing. So in order to resolve to the harmonic relationship of the frequency, we need to be able to increase it. So basically my note is flat. It's too low from the actual 440 frequency. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the peg and we're going to see if it matches up now. So now that the two harmonic frequencies are matched to the same exact uh, 440, then you would hear that it has been placed in tune. This is the calibration that we want to achieve when we're tuning with fine tuners or pegs. So I know it can be a little hard to detect the difference of interference beats at first, especially if you're relatively new to the instrument or a parent, but given some time, you will be able to detect it a little bit easier. So now that I've gone over what exactly tuning is, I want to get into the nitty gritty of how to tune your instrument. So first, what we're going to talk about is that string instruments are tuned in perfect fifths. Each string is tuned an interval of a perfect fifth from one string to the next. For the violin, the standard tuning will be G, D, A, and E. Whereas the violin, the viola, sorry, and the cello are tuned to C, G, D, A. The first letter of the sequence will always be the lowest pitched open string or visually the thickest string. So when I start from my lowest string, it'll always be a G. And then going to the right, we'll have D, then A, and finally finishing up at E, which you can see is much more thinner than the other three strings and will be the highest pitched of all four of them. There are many different types of electronic violin tuners out there that we can use to help differentiate these frequencies. Um, they're very cheap, very inexpensive, and you can even find some free apps online, such as I was showing you with Pitch Tuner. So basically the two types, there's a fixed pitch where you can have the actual tuner app play a specific pitch that you want to do. So I'm going to demonstrate that with my tuner app. We're going to go over here and we're going to do I'm going to play the A. So it's playing the 440A. This is easy to use for people who have already developed an ear for interference beats. But if you do not, you know, what you want to do is you're going to put it on the regular microphone option, where, as you can see, as I talk, it's trying to find the pitch. So I'm going to demonstrate this as best as possible by showing you what happens when I play the 440A on my piano. So you see the dial went straight into the middle because it was matched perfectly, and it will light up green, indicating that you've played the note in tune. You'll also notice that it takes a little bit of time to adjust. That's because the microphone from your app device 
is going to try to slowly register until it finds the correct frequency. This will work on piano because it's a fixed instrument. So keyboards and pianos should always be in two. Whereas if I were to play it on a string instrument, it might be a little off. I've already pre-adjusted and um, tuned my instrument beforehand, so as you can see, it was in tune. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to just practice with the tuner in front of us on how to fix the pitch. So I'm going to detune my instrument as if I had practiced for a couple of days. So now I've lowered the pitch, and we're going to see where it lines up with the electronic tuner now. So here we are, and you can see where the needle's dropped. The needle has gone very low, so that means that my pitch is flat from where it was before on the green dial. So what we're going to practice right now with a fine tuner is adjusting that pitch. Now, unfortunately, I do not have a fine tuner on my instrument for the A, but I do have it for the E string, as you can see right here. So some rules about using the fine tuner. It's very important to notice that you, it's an actual mechanical device right here, and it can be lowered or raised. So I'm going to try to dip mine just a little bit so that you can see it. Okay. Now, when we turn the screw, we try to follow the old time phrase such as righty tighty, lefty loosey. So meaning that when we turn it to the right or clockwise, we're going to increase the frequency, making the pitch higher. But if we turn to the left or counterclockwise, we will lower the pitch. So what you're going to want to watch is which direction do you have to change it oopsies, <laughs> on the tuner app. So I'm going to try to adjust the tuner app so that you can see it a little bit more clear. Okay, so here we are on the tuner app now. And I'm going to pluck the E string, and we're going to see where it needs to go. So, here we are. So my tuner app is saying that the pitch is low, and I don't even think it's registering as an E at the moment. It's registering as a D sharp. So let's double check that. Mm -hmm. So it is a D sharp. So the string needs to be an E. So that means we're going to turn the screw to the right side. So I'm going to try this with one hand. It's going to be fun. So here we go. We're going to pluck it one more time. And we're going to turn it to the right. And then we're going to pluck it one more time to see where we've adjusted to. Okay, now we're a little bit higher. We're still not hitting the E note, which means we need to really move the um, fine tuner up. Let's try again. Okay, I think that's registering as an E now. I'm sorry, I'm trying to clear this up as best as possible. Let's adjust that. Okay. So, oh, it's so bright. Okay, there it is, some letters. Um, oh, this is difficult to do. <laughs> sorry, give me one second. I don't, I want you to be able to see the letter, so. Okay. Let's see, maybe I should turn my brightness down on this one, and it will work out better. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to bring it down to this. Let's see. Okay. It looks a little bit better. Okay. There we go. So you can see where the letters are, and we're going to practice. Plucking the E string again. Okay, we're still not at the E, we're at a D sharp. So we're going to bring it up, turning to the right. Okay. Okay, so now that we're at the E, we're going to turn one more time. Always do it in increments. Never change your instrument quickly or fast because you always risk damaging the string. If the string is over tightened too soon, 
you have too much pressure building up and the string, especially with how thin it is, will pop and break. And currently there's a lot of music stores not open, so your only option would be ordering a string from online, okay? So, let's see how that matches up. Okay, so you can see that I'm almost in the middle. I've overshot it a little bit. So we're going to, oops, reopen my app and lower the pitch. Almost. And we are there we go. Perfect. So we're going to hear that pitch one more time. So as you can see, the greens are lighting up, which means that we've hit the desired pitch. So one more time, we're going to go over this again with the fine tuner. The fine tuner is a very sensitive mechanical device. You do not want to force the string up and you don't want to force it down too soon, too quickly. So take your time to slowly turn it in small rotating motions, clockwise or counterclockwise. If you're turning it clockwise towards the right, you're going to make the pitch sharp. But if you turn it towards the left, counterclockwise, you are going to make the pitch more flat. And that's all dependent on your tuner, where you want to be. So we're going to do this one more time. We have the app in front of us, and we're going to pizzicato. So my E is just slightly flat. Watch that one more time. So we're going to turn it clockwise. And it wasn't a lot. So you're just going to move it very, very, a tiny amount. Now let's see what happens from that adjustment. Near perfect. So you want to get it as close to that center dial as possible with both lights flashing green. Now, you can use that technique for every single fine tuner that's available to the string. Where the fine tuner is located, it will physically be attached at the bottom, connected to the tail piece. So for my E string, it's here. If I had an A string tuner, it would be along here. And if I had a D string, here. And if I had a G string, right there. What we're going to work on right now is how to tune a more severe case with the pets. So peg tuning is very daunting only because a lot of things can go wrong, such as you over tighten. If you over tighten with the peg, you will cause the string to snap. That is a given. And every music teacher has gone through it where the parent has said, I've tried to tune the peg, but I broke the string. It's very sensitive, even more sensitive than a guitar. So you need to be very, very careful on the motion and the amount of force that you put into the string. So what we're going to do is we're just going to talk a little bit about the peg, and we're going to talk about how to push in and rotate the peg slowly, okay? So the peg is located in something called the peg box, which I'll show you right here, in these little circles in here. So the peg box has been created to match the shape and width of your peg, okay? So it's adjusted by a luthier, a professional woodworker who's been trained for many years to make repairs and adjustments on musical instruments. At no point should you ever take the time to try and fix or adjust your instrument on your own. You might cause more damage or irreversible damage, which means you might even have to buy a new instrument. So please, if something happens to your peg, if it breaks, or if, you know you crack the peg box, you will need to take it to a loose here. And currently right now with all the isolation rules, you might not find one. So take my advice and practice this very slowly. So what we're going to do is I'm going to demonstrate how to pull out and push in the peg. So rule number one is that you always want to tune the instrument from a bottom pitch 
up. Even if your instrument is already at a closer frequency, you want to still pull and push the peg out so that it drops. So we're going to show you like this. Oop, I'm doing the wrong one. Let's try that for the right chord one. So we're going to try that again. And we're lowering the pitch. To do this, you're going to carefully grab the peg. You're going to use fulcrum it with your two fingers. Mainly, I like to use my index or my thumb while my violin is secure in the lap. So you're going to pizzicato the pitch and you're going to grab it carefully and you should just lightly push it clockwise. When you push it clockwise or twist it clockwise, it will lower the pitch, okay? And if you turn the peg counterclockwise, it will pull the string up and tighten making the pitch become raised. So just like our fine tuners, where you wanted to turn clockwise to raise the pitch, when you use the pegs, clockwise will lower the pitch. So what you need to know is when you do adjust the pegs, you're not just gonna pull them and push them. There is a technique of where you need to, as you push it up, you're moving counterclockwise, you need to carefully and slowly push the peg back inside the peg box. You do not want to just move it around because what will happen is the, the shape of the peg is a cone. So when the cone is pulled out, it has less friction to hold into place. So the peg will actually slip. And that's what is a very common issue that a lot of parents say is, oh, the peg came out. Well, that's because if your student was trying to adjust it, they did not push the peg in far enough to where the friction would hold it into place. Now, this is a big issue because if you force it and you push too hard, you will cause the peg box to crack. So please take the time to make sure that you do not force your peg in, but you also don't force it by pulling it out. So we are going to practice just changing shifts, shifting the pitch right now. So we have the G string, very, very flat, and we're just going to put the peg down clockwise, and then as we push in, we're going to turn counterclockwise to raise the pitch. And now we'll have a higher pitch. Now, if you do not have a defined ear, perfect pitch or relative pitch, you will need the assistance of the tuner. So let's see what note my G string is at right now. Oh boy, we are at a, let's see. Very, very, very low, we're almost at an E. So we're going to raise the pitch. So we're going to do it in slow increments. Once again, clockwise, counterclockwise. Do not force the peg. Be gentle with it and always make one motion. Don't try to do multiple turns in one sitting. You will put too much stress on the string and you can pop it or you might over tune it. So let's see where we're at now. Okay, we're at an F. So we need to keep going up. So, once again, clockwise, a little bit, and then pull it up. Let's see where we are at now. Just a little flat. Okay, we're getting closer. So we're going to want to turn it a little bit slower and a little bit less now. So here we go. Okay, and let's see where we're at. Almost there. We're going to make one more adjustment clockwise and counterclockwise. Oh, I think I might have overshot it on that one. Let's see. Yep. So we're going to go backwards now. This is a good representation of what it means to overturn your peg. 
So what we need to do is we need to lower it. So in this case, you really don't need to counterclockwise it. You just need to make one small motion down. We're going to turn it clockwise. Let's see where we're at. A little bit lower. And Okay, we're pretty close now. So here we are. You'll hear. So we are at a G sharp. So it's hard for me to see through the tuner app. We're going to lower it down. There it is. So let's see where we're at on our G. Almost there. Just a little flat. One more time. Come clockwise and up. Perfect. So here we are. Perfectly tuned. Now you saw that I was doing micro adjustments near the end. You can do that if you are a seasoned veteran, but most of the time I want you to practice with the slow counter uh, clockwise first and then quickly move counterclockwise. Small adjustments like this can put stress on the peg box, the physical smaller section of the peg, and the string. So you want to limit the amount of times that you're constantly moving it around. Also remember, when you're practicing tuning, if this is new, you're going to be doing many adjustments. That's why I said take it slow, because if you try to do it too quickly and too soon, you will pop the string. The strings are very sensitive. They can't take a lot of tension. They're under an amount of force already from the bridge. So the more wear and tear that you cause it, the more likely you are to break your strings. Now that being said, the E string is probably the most difficult one to tune with the, um, the pegs, but that's because of how thin and sensitive it is. So if you do not need to use the peg for the E string, please, Try to only use the fine tuner for it to limit the amount of stress that you put on the metal. Now, if you notice that your fine tuner gets all the way to the bottom and you're still not at the correct pitch, that means that you've turned it completely clockwise, moving this, the, the string sharp, and you still are not at the correct pitch in the middle of your tuner, then you will have to adjust with the peg. You want to be very, very careful and use even less pressure when you turn the peg. But you still want to remain that force when you push it in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate how to tune one more time with the fine tuner and then the peg. We're going to use the E string this time for the peg and my D string Oh, I can't do that, can I? No. We have to use the E string with the fine tuner, and we're going to use my D string, though, with the peg. So, I'm going to detune my E string so that when we match it with the tuner, we're looking for that frequency right in the middle. As you can see, it's very flat. So, we're going to take the violin, we're going to turn the fine tuner clockwise. And then we're going to play it, pluck it again and see where we're at. Almost there. We're very, very close. So make a small adjustment. Maybe just turn it a little bit. And let's see where we're at. Oh, almost there. Let's see. Mm, not so much. Here we go. Both lights are lit green. It was as close to the middle as possible for now. So we will call that in tune. The frequency for that E that you want to listen for is 660 hertz. Now I'm going to detune my D string. And if we play it on the tuner, you'll notice that it is a C sharp, almost on the dot. So it's a half step too low. 
So we're going to push down clockwise and then bring it up counterclockwise while pushing the peg slightly in. And we're going to see where we're at. So it looks like it's a D sharp. We're going, we've overshot it. So we're going to just loosen it by turning clockwise. So we're almost there, if you want to see on the tuner. We're a little sharp. So we're going to do the world's smallest micro adjustment. Let's see. So we're going to just bring it up. Can be a little finicky sometimes with older instruments. There you go. And that's how to tune carefully with the pegs and with the fine tuners. Now it's very important that last comment that I made is very finicky with old instruments. My instrument is from the 1800s, so my peg box has been repaired at least one or two times. So my pegs are constantly adjusting to the shape they need to be. Now, the same can be said with mass-produced and cheaper instruments that we purchase through Amazon or through school retailers. The peg box will be just mass-produced, and most pegs are not cut professionally by a luthier to fit in properly. So what you will notice is that the pegs either slip a lot or it'll feel like the peg cannot physically move. Under no circumstance, if your peg feels locked in place, should you force it with any type of physical tool, such as a wrench or even your own hand. You always want to try to move it slowly in small little rotating motions to loosen the wedge, okay? The best thing to do with a peg that's been stuck inside your peg box is to take an oil-based lube from a violin shop um, I've also used in emergencies a little, a small smidgen of olive oil. And where you want to apply it is right along the peg. So you'll see that the peg goes inside the peg box. You want to apply a little bit of oil along this edge and the circle of the peg box. And maybe if you can, get a drip or two inside there. Avoid hitting the strings though. You don't want to get any oil or any alcohol based substance near the metal of the string. It will corrode it. Once you have the oil there, you're going to just slowly try to turn it as best as possible, okay? I'm gonna fix that. There we go. Um, you don't want it to completely unravel. So once you feel that you've gotten some leeway with it, just pull out until the string unravels itself a little bit. And then you want to massage the oil carefully inside of the wood. And then with your palm, just put it to the point where you feel like the peg is stiff in place, and then you can adjust it freely. The oil will allow a little bit of lubrication inside the peg box, so that if the peg is not at the correct shape, it will allow a little bit more free uh, freeway with the uh, friction, and you'll have more mobility with it. But once again, I really need to stress, do not force the peg. If you do, you risk cracking the peg box, and when the peg box is broken, your entire infrastructure for that pressure with all the strings from the bridge has become compromised and your entire instrument can collapse on itself. So please take the time to always tune slowly and carefully. The last couple of things I just wanna go over before we end this live stream is just some finalized tips for everyone. So always remember when you tune, regardless if it's with the fine tuners or the pegs, that you want to start the pitch a little bit lower and then raise the pitch until you match it with your tuner app. Try to use your fine tuners as much as possible to prevent string breakage. When they become unwound down to the nub, so your fine tuner all the way to the nub, the bottom of the uh, tailpiece, that's when you want to try to loosen it and use the peg to tighten the string slightly. But don't over tighten because you risk once again damaging the fine tuner or even breaking the string. Always try to tune the middle string first or the A string 
before you follow tuning D, G, or E. It's traditionally the orchestral way of tuning their instrument, and it's just a good uh, tuning routine that you should get into the habit of. If you're going to be using a tuner, try humming the right note with the tuner first before you tune. This is a good ear training exercise to develop that relative pitch so that when you do have a note that's out of tune, um, you will be able to adjust it and get it as close to as possible. I hope this clinic was very helpful and insightful for everyone involved. Remember, there's no shame in taking your time in learning how to tune. Even professional musicians know that good practice and a performance comes with a well-tuned instrument. I want to wish everyone to stay safe and healthy, and I hope to hear from you all very soon. I will be hosting another clinic at 8.45 p.m. tonight, and I hope to see anyone who missed this stream at there as well. Take care and be safe.